All right, thank you. And uh, thanks to Bradley for putting on a great uh, EOS track this year. Um, welcome to my talk, Beyond the Kiss Cam, Measuring the Fan with Computer Vision. I'm George Williams, and this is work done in collaboration with Chris Bregler and Ian Spiro. Computer vision and sports go hand in hand these days. It's changed how we analyze and view the athlete, changed how we analyze and view the team, and it's changed how we view the playing field. So what if you took all of this technology, turned the cameras 180 degrees to the fans? What makes, what makes that possible? And importantly, what is it useful for? And who is it useful for? And that's what this talk is about. So first, who we are. We're the Human Movement Lab at NYU. Uh, researchers in advanced applications in human movement and human motion. From our home base in downtown Manhattan, we're involved in several uh, efforts. Let me speak about those briefly here. Uh, the Green Dot Project, core research in gesture and body language analysis. You may have seen some of our work recently in New York Times uh, analyzing the body gestures of presidential candidates. And before that, uh, we showed a software pipeline for um, correlating motion styles of celebrities and politicians. Crowd to Cloud, open platform for next generation gaming using the audience as a controller. And our um, company spinoff of the work we do at the lab, custom motion capture solutions for extreme environments. Um, we do live mocap for CNN, uh, underwater mocap we did recently with Dana Vollmer, Olympic medalist, and the mocap of Alan Gilbert, the conductor of the New York Philharmonic, all collaborations with the New York Times. So we know something about measuring uh, performers and athletes with, with vision. But what about the fan? What do we measure with, with computer vision? Well, to be sure, uh, probably stating the obvious, athlete metrics are different than fan metrics. For the athlete, it's X, Y, Z, geometry and, and physics. So the, the curve of a pitch, the force of a ball coming off of a bat. Sometimes in a more advanced applications, it's biomechanics. Uh, in a piece we did, uh, mo-capping Mariano Rivera, um, it was about you know, what he does differently with his body to uh, make his cutter unhittable by hitters. Uh, more often than not, it's, it's done inter in measuring the athlete's done indirectly, indirectly through props, so, so a baseball or, or a, a bat. But the fan, so uh, in order to s start, we looked at uh, an actual game. We, we recorded all the fans at a college basketball game, uh, actually a college basketball and, and women's basketball game, and, and recorded the, uh, the entirety of the entire game, all the fans, and, and exhaustively labeled the video, each frame, each fan, uh, with what they were doing. And so here's a word cloud of, of what they're doing. You've probably been at a game and, and you've seen all these things, you know, a lot of uh, speaking, a lot of talking, using the phone. Um, a lot of what we call low sentiment activities. So, um, uh, you know, just mundane things that people do everywhere, not, not just at a game. Now, there are a few, there are a few uh, gems in there. There's, uh, you know, cheering, there's arguing, there's dancing, there's, there's stuff that's representative of what fans are, are sort of actually doing at a game, uh, uh, contributing to the energy of, of the atmosphere. So as a first approximation, that's a great place to start to, to measure the fan. So that's what we do. We, we look for positive sentiment gestures, the usual suspects, clapping, cheering, high-fiving, negative sentiment, um, booing, thumbs down, arguing with the ref. Uh, as an aside, you know, there, there are very specific gestures you have to be very careful of. Um, uh, when, you're, when your classifiers are, are too generic. So, for, for example, take, take the tomahawk chop, which is, you know, ostensibly it's, it's using a weapon, a negative sentiment, but, <clears throat> but it, in this case, it's fans uh, actually showing support for their team. So any system that, that you have for, for trying to recognize gestures needs to be site-specific, event-specific, and, and importantly, adaptive. Um, uh, I think uh, probably a, a less in politically correct example is, is uh, uh, the O that the fans of the University of or Oregon make, uh, which is a, a low sentiment gesture in any other classica classification system, but it's positive for, for that case. So, uh, you know, expressive sentiment, that's, the, that's sort of what we're looking for. So a good first pass is to, hey, you know, use facial expression that, that you can find in, in a lot of digital cameras these days. Uh, it's, it's commodity at this point. So 
Um, so we, we actually, you know, we tried that. And we didn't have to go too far for content. We, we went to a fan cam site. If, you, if you're familiar with what they do, they, they take panoramic, panoramic images of, of stadiums. They've done most stadiums in the US, I think, at this point. And um, uh, they produce panoramas of, of, of fans inside the stadium. So you know, what's different than, than the panoramic image you, you can take with your iPhone is that they, they do it at multiple depths. So you can actually go in and zoom. You can go to their website now and do it. You zoom in, and you can see the fans in the upper sections in the nosebleed seats. Um, so, so that was, that was a, a first pass to sort of look for, for expressive sentiment. And the results are, were, underwhel were underwhelming. So we, we, uh, it, we did it on a game. It was a, a Celtics game uh, in 2011. Um, the, the TD Gardens has a, a, a capacity of 14,000 people. It was at capacity that night. Um, that produced 15,000 uh, panoramic tiles. We used a, a face detector, a state-of-the-art face detector at the time. It was uh, Pit Pat, uh, I believe, which, which has subsequently been, been purchased by Google. So it's, it's Google's uh, face detector. Detected 2,000 faces. And we used a state-of-the-art expression detection system, CERT, uh, computer expression recognition toolkit, um, and that produced 15, 15 smiles. So, you know, uh, if you actually go, you know, I know Celtics have had some bad games and bad years, but 2000, 2011 was pretty good. And so it's, it's something else was going on. And if you actually go to the, the fan cam site, um, you can see this. And, and there are uh, more than 2,000 faces and, and certainly more than 15 people smiling. So, you know, face detection, expression, facial expression recognition is, is, is good, but, you know, we, we need... It, it's, it's actually, you know, it's not the only thing. Where if you just focus on the face, you're missing out on a lot of information. So, and face detection is just, it's just one what we call intrinsic biometric, which includes, you know, not just the face, it includes other things like body motion, body language, and, and gesture. So, fortunately, there's, there's science and technology to, to measure this stuff um, that's out there that, that we've captured in the past few years in a, in a software-based pipeline. So it's, uh, at, at a conceptual level, it's, it's, very, um, it's very straightforward. Capture and isolate the, the people, the fans in the video. Detect the pose, where their head is, where their hands are, where their body is. Um, uh, try to make some identification of the activity and recognize the gesture um, when that's, when that's uh, appropriate. We've captured this pipeline in our active stadium project, which we use now uh, for crowd and audience participation gaming. Um, we've run our first tests on, a, on, a college, on two, two basketball games in the past year. Um, uh, it's a continuing R&D project with our corporate sponsor, Digitas of New York City. Uh, they're, uh, they're all about branding and marketing, and, and they're going to help us deploy at various events and venues. Um, in the next in the next year in the U.S. and, and possibly outside the U.S. and uh, a new development um, uh, uh, will be deploying this, a system at a major pro sports uh, event stadium in in late 2013. Um, uh, so, so just briefly, I don't want to get bogged down in, in too many details, but there's a there's a, a heavy machine learning component to to what we do. Um, uh, we use we use the, the latest in convolutional neural networks, a cornerstone of, of deep learning. And here I'm showing what what we're using neural nets for for a pose estimation. So basically, um, pretty straightforward what it's what it's depicting. At the top row, it's novel input uh, uh, poses, uh, video images of poses and, uh, and activity the system hasn't seen before, and it's doing matching. It's doing matching against our database. And, and producing a result set of, of poses and, and gestures that it thinks it's similar to. Um, uh, so a, as that slide suggests, we, you, we have a huge, uh, an extremely huge database of, of poses and orientations. Um, you know, a, at the beginning, we used to try to create this ourselves with our motion capture system, but you know, over the past couple of, of years, we were able to scale it out exponentially by, by crowdsourcing a lot of this. Um, sensors, you know, we're talking about videos, we're talking about cameras. Um, uh, uh, so, you know, normal cameras is, is fine, it's good enough. If you have high speed and if you have more than HD, that's great, we'll take it. You know, the, the Kinect, you know, that would be, that would be awesome because, you know, the Kinect, as you know, it does a lot of the things we're talking about. It finds, 
finds faces, it finds bodies, it does kinematics. Problem with the Kinect is it, it doesn't scale up to, to stadium crowds for, for lots of reasons. You know, it, it, it has limitations in range and scale, and you know, one Kinect can only capture a, a few humans. So, so a, a Kinect in each seat, that would be great, but the, the instrumentation on that is prohibitively expensive. So th again, so standard camera images, uh, this is standard HD camera image on the left that we used for our system at a basketball game. Um, uh, and in previous academic work, we show how it's even possible to go even lower res, so, um, uh, and even extract kinematic data uh, from low res footage. So it's, it's amazing what you can do with just a few pixels um, now. Uh, features in development, um, uh, let me just run through these uh, uh, briefly. They're, it's just a subset of, of what we're building. Uh, crowd sentiment maps, fan cluster detection, a super fan finder, cheer meter, group gesture detection, activity search. Um, uh, so you know, referencing our earlier conversations about sentiment, here, here's the crowd and here's just a heat map showing positive sentiment that we've, we've detected in our system. In this case, it was uh, clapping and, and cheering. Um, building on that, uh, the, you know, and there's the observation that, that fans tend to cluster together um, with their sentiment and so you know, what you're seeing here is, well, and, and most fans tend to, you know, sit in one section of a stadium, uh, but that's not entirely true. And, and here we have an example where fans for one team and another team have, have actually mixed within a crowd. And, and we show, there, there are two points in the, in the game we're showing through the heat map. Uh, fan super finder, uh, the super fan finder, um, sometimes a fan, uh, the super fan is easy to spot and, and sometimes they're not. And so, you know, the superfan is, is a, a unique kind of phenomenon. Usually they're the, the focal point, uh, they're the seed of, of clustering activity for sentiment. And other times they're the only source of sentiment in, in a section um, of a crowd. And, and this is important. You know, we've, we've pitched this to, to producers at, at uh, stadiums and, you know, uh, uh, the feedback I get, w one person told me, you know, the superfan is, is underappreciated. It's something they actually actively search for. Um, when, when they're uh, at the game. And so, you know, being able to automatically find such a fan and, and integrate it into their, into their systems, they have uh, uh, EVS systems for automatically queuing interesting content to broadcast would be, would be great. So it's good to get testimonial on, on something like this. Group gestures, uh, this is, uh, you know, it's kind of what you're expecting. Here you're seeing uh, actual fan uh, f uh, audience footage on the left. Uh, uh, and you know they're leaning to the left to move this um, to move this avatar in this case a car to the left. It's on the jumbotron, so it, they're actually moving uh, moving a car through simple group gestures. And it's just a way to sort of an audience participation tool to sort of get the the fan involved in the game. It's something that can be done at the breaks in the game. Uh, cheer meter, what you expect? It's you know a simple, fun linear gauge where you can actually dis display it, give feedback to the fans. Use it as a tool to promote intra-stadium rivalry, you know, fan against, uh, this section against another section. Um, and activity search. So this is a, this is sort of what we call a game day metric. So doing post-game analysis. So a stadium, producers can sort of after a game take a look at, all right, where were the fans, you know, uh, what was their sentiment sort of level uh, positively at this point in the game? Or were they interested in, in the advertisements that were being displayed over here? Was there a lot of low sentiment when you would have expected that they were into a game? So privacy always comes up when, when we're talking about this stuff. Um, you know, fans are, are, you know, we're talking about cameras, we're talking about uh, video. People are drinking during these games, they're spending time with family. Um, uh, so fans might be hesitant to, to be at, at an event where, where this kind of stuff is happening. So, and, it, and we've gotten pushback from, from events where it's like, okay, this is a non-starter for us. We can't, you know, we don't want to do this. And so we wanted to tease out, we wanted to tease out uh, sort of what was going on there. And so we, we put out a, a, a survey to, to fans and asked them uh, several questions. Uh, the first, you know, had, had you recently attended a live sports event with, with something like a, a, a live fan dance cam or a live fan kiss cam or, you know, one, one of those things, we've all seen it, one of those things where they, the fan is the spotlight of, of the activity for a moment or, or shooting a, shooting a, a, a basket from half court. Um, uh, so and most of the fan, no, most people have, have experienced that kind of thing. And we asked them if you wanted to be that fan on the camera. And, and 
you know, not surprisingly, most people, uh, they did not. 90% said no. And, and so, you know, people go to the game for the, for, the, for the crowd energy and the excitement and to root their fans. They don't really need to go there to be the, the spotlight of, of the entertainment. Then we asked them, if they knew that they were constantly being rec recorded, would, would that, you know, would that be an invasion of, of their privacy? And would they think it's an invasion of privacy? And, and this to me was a little surprising how much it was no, about 90%. So it says, well, and, and a follow-up question, which is, um, you know, I if you knew the stadium was recording you, would that affect your decision to attend the event? And again, large number of people said no. So I think this, this sort of uh, uh, says a couple of things to me. I don't know. It was surprising to me. I don't, I don't know about you guys, but it's, it says on the one hand, you know, it's a social commentary. We live in public. We know cameras are all around us recording us, and, and we've kind of surrendered to that, to that fact. Um, but um, it also, I think it, it says something about the fact that people understand that there's technology in the stadium around them, and, and this technology is there, for the most part, to sort of help them uh, get, you know, uh, to help the overall energet energetic atmosphere that's that's going on, and so um, I, I think people are willing to sacrifice a little bit of of their privacy for for that kind of experience. So um, as far as um, uh, uh, measuring the fan, what what is with computer? What is the value proposition? Um, uh, uh, sorry about the slide there, but basically it says that you know we're just starting the the deployments um, uh, this year. Uh, we're going to know more next year about you know what actually worked um, in in you know uh, putting deploying these things in in stadiums. So does does knowing does knowing where all the fans are at specific points in time in their in their sentiment does that help in in tuning the performance for for subsequent games? Uh, do some of these tools for interactivity do they do they help engage fans? Are, are fans likely more to stay in their seat? Are they likely more to, to come to the next game for, for, some, of those, for some of those experiences? Um, but the important thing is getting this into the hands of, of the producers and the people that, that feel like it's useful now to um, improve, improve the live uh, a stadium uh, and sports viewing experience. Um, and and you know, we've got some testimonial at this point that that, that is going to be the case. Um, I showed uh, uh, some of the results of our survey. Um, I, people have asked me for um, the final results. It's like 30 or 40 questions. So we'll put the results of that up on our website, uh, manhattanmocap.com. Um, and also, I, I, I glossed over a lot of the details, math details, of, of how we do pose estimation and how we recognize gestures. There's a lot of stuff going on, on there. There's a, a lot of, um, a lot of st uh, statistics and and so a lot of that has been published uh, recently in uh, over the past few years, and they're at our academic site at movement.nyu.edu. And uh, thank you very much. And I think uh, I'm going to try to show you um, a video of uh, one part of our pipeline here. I'm going to cross my fingers and hope that this plays. And if it doesn't work, um, we'll just, oh, there we go. Might have to give it a second to queue up. So like I said, there, there are multiple parts of the pipeline to actually do this kind of, this kind of recognition. Um, uh, this represents some of, the, some of the earlier stages. And you know, while this is going, I can actually also, you can also queue up any, any questions or anything like that. Sure. So if you have a question, just please raise your hand and I'll bring you the mic. Thank you. Now, could you uh, talk a little bit about the video of the Yes. Well, you know, what's funny, you know, we, when, when we started doing this, you know, as an experiment, all, everything, was in, everything was in like MATLAB and it was not real time. And over the course of years, uh, a lot of the stages of the pipelines, like the early stages of the pipeline, isolating the video, detecting features, a lot of that is, most of that is entirely real time now. A lot of the, the re, you know, the machine learning component, you know, a few years ago that was, it, it took, you know, it took a whole week to train um, uh, you, 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 
even using the best neural networks. And now with GPUs, that's come down to, to like a day. And then, you know, once you have training, once you have a, a training model, then the recognition happen, happens very quickly. So it really depends on what part of the system you're talking about. Training takes a while. Gathering new gestures takes a while. You know, we have active learning models that help to make that quicker. But, you know, once you, once you, have, once you have your learning models already present, um, the, the recognition happens, happens very quickly. So, uh, so it depends on which, what part of the system you're talking about. The goal, the goal is to have the pipeline entirely, entirely in real time. And so, uh, and that's the automatic pipeline. And then, and then what happens is, uh, you know, our system is, is very, uh, it's very um, uh, sensitive to, what we make sure to do is, you know, when the automatic system produces high confidence, then, then you know, we, we use that. If, if it ever gets into uh, an area where, you know, there's, there's low confidence in actually um, a, a assigning a label or classifying something, and then, then we have a human in the loop. Like any, com like any computer vision system out there, you know, sport vision will tell you the same thing. You know, they have a human in the loop in all stages, making sure that if th a mistake happens that there's someone there to, to you know, veto whatever decision uh, that gets made. So, you know, we, have, we actually have the same system. So in, in parts of the system right now that, that aren't um, uh, uh, real time, we'll have a human in the loop that bridges that gap. And just a quick follow up to that. Are, are you planning to sync in in event soundtrack to that? so that uh, uh, smoke on the water can be measured in certain sections for fan affinity versus other soundtracks, versus organ playing, versus advertising, for example? Um, you know, uh, you mean like using audio as, as a metric? Yeah. Yeah, right. For for the yeah for for the for the game day metric, uh, maybe this is re related to the game day metric feature, where you know we are we're sort of looking at all the fans and you know applying sentiment, and, and that that entire thing is synchronized to as much content of the of the game that's available. If that includes advertising, then then we can in include that as well. But that one, it's very important that things are synchronized because. The, that's that's the that's a real time analytic tool. So they want to know after the fact, okay, what exactly was happening um, when when the fans were bored, when people started using their cell phones or or using apps. So um, yes. Are there any other questions? All right. Well, George, thank you very much.